Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Nanad Devaka. I am a technical marketing engineer with the Catalyst 9000 switching family. In this video, we're going to be looking at the fundamentals of smart licensing using policy. There are certain terminology that we need to be aware of before we start diving into smart licensing using policy. Uh, here are all of them. The first one is right to use licensing or RTU. Uh, this is the old model of licensing that we used on our boxes before smart licensing was introduced. In this model, the license level is fixed per device on purchase and it's very difficult to change the license level once the purchase is done. Uh, also, the licenses themselves are node locked to the device and it's mapped to the serial number. Next, we have smart licensing. This is our current licensing model that we use across the Cat9K family. The licenses are stored in a centralized repository and the licenses can be mapped as per the requirements to the end devices. Finally, we have the policy. The policy is a list of parameters that are maintained by the switch, determining the licensing behavior of the device in question. Let us look at the licensing journey that we've taken since release. Uh, initially, when an Cat 9K family was introduced, we used the right to use licensing or the RTU licensing. Like I mentioned before, the licenses were not locked to the serial numbers. The advantage was that it was very simple to use, but there was absolutely no, no flexibility. With, uh, with 16.9.1 and up to 17.3.1, we used smart licensing as a licensing model on our Cat9K products. Here, we used a centralized repository for license management, the centralized repository being the CSSM. The drawback of smart licensing, however, is that it was too complex and it required a learning curve to understand how the licensing operations perform on the device. Taking the customer feedback into consideration with 17.3.2 and later, we introduced smart licensing using policy. With smart licensing using policy, we are using the same centralized repository, the CSSM. The difference, however, is we have abstracted most of the complications from the end user. And the end result is we have a licensing model that is extremely simple to use. And the design itself is air gap by nature, which is very similar to how RTU licensing used to work. Now, the key fundamental aspect around which smart licensing is built on is the smart account. The smart account is a Cisco.com service that, uh, that, end, that helps you to organize your assets in a centralized location. And this is not used just for your smart licensing. This is leveraged by multiple portals to enable multiple experiences. And you can use your smart account today to place orders in the CCW and you'll be able to have those orders delivered directly to your specified smart account. The centralized repository that we're talking about is the CSSM and you'd be able to log in to software.cisco.com and you'd be able to log in using your smart account. And once you do that, you'd be able to take a look at your inventory that contains a list of all of the, all of the licenses that you've purchased, as well as all of the product instances and the license levels that each of the product instances are configured with. Now let us understand the fundamentals of how smart licensing using policy works. You have a device, a 9300 in this example. Now, our device periodically uh, uh, generates what is called a RUM report. The device generates this RUM report either periodically or if there's a change in the license level. So this RUM report contains the serial number and the PID as well as the digital signature of the device that generated the report. It also contains the configured license states and the timestamps of when the report was generated. In its most fundamental point, uh, uh, breaking it down into the most fundamental actions, uh, smart licensing using policy requires you to take this report file and send it to the CSSM. The CSSM on its part, once it receives the file, it's going to validate this report. It is going to update the license count in the repository that it has, and it's going to generate an ACK file. Uh, and it's going to generate an ACK file. <clears throat> An optional step that you can do is you can take this ACK file and send it back to the device. Uh, the ACK contains the actual acknowledgement that just says, hey, I've received your report. But it also contains a custom policy if it is present. If the smart account is mapped to a custom policy, then the custom policy will also be present in the ACK file so that the end device can update its state to the custom policy. But what is this policy that we're talking about? The policy determines the licensing behavior of the box and what exactly do we mean when we say licensing behavior. 
The policy determines how frequently the device tries to send a report to the CSSM and if an act is required back from the CSSM for the licensing process to complete. Uh, it also defines the behavior of how the switch is going to react uh, if the license level on the device is going to be changed. So looking at the default values that each of these are set to, uh, by default, the ACK is not needed. It is an optional step. So for you to complete licensing, you simply have to take the, the, the file and you need to send it to the CSSM. You don't need to wait back for an acknowledgement. For both your perpetual as well as your subscription licenses, namely your network advantage, the, uh, and, uh, network essentials, or your DNA advantage and DNA essentials, you need to send the first report in 365 days, but the subsequent reports are not required. However, we recommend that you send a report at least once a year, and this is to ensure that your centralized repository is not too outdated and is relatively up to date. So let's say you place an order using the CCW tool. Uh, how does smart licensing using policy play a role in it? Now you, you're going to place an order on the CCW. Uh, a mandatory step when you're placing the order is you need to specify your smart account as well as your virtual account. The factory, when it receives the order, we're going to install the purchase licenses on the product and we're going to perform the first reporting to the CSSM before we ship the product out to you. So the end customer, when they return, when they receive the, the product, they simply have to boot up the product, stack it in the network. They're going to be able to start using it immediately from day zero uh, without having to perform any specific operation with respect to licensing. But let's say you have a device that's been in your network for a while, day N operations. So it's been a while since you sent the last report. Now, how would you send the report from the device over to the CSSM? You have multiple methods and the method that you choose would depend upon the size of your network as well as your unique rec network requirements. Uh, let's say that you have a low device scale, then you would either opt for manual offline if you want a pure offline network or you can opt for a direct connect if you have devices that are able to reach to software.cisco.com directly. But the commonly used method would involve having an interim device sit between uh, your uh, the switches as for, uh, and the CSSM. So this interim device is going to act as a collection point for all of the reports from the individual devices. And it's going to send these reports over to the CSSM. And when the CSSM responds with an ACK, it's going to push the ACK back towards the end devices. Now this interim device can either be a lightweight tool like the CSLU or the Cisco Smart License Utility, or it can be uh, your on-prem solution for management and uh, monitoring of your network like the DNA center. So in conclusion, right, when we use smart licensing using policy, we're really getting the best of both worlds. Uh, the first one is simplicity. Uh, we have the simplicity and the air gap nature of right to use licenses. Uh, from a simplicity standpoint, you simply have to boot up the device on boot and you're going to be able to start using it. Uh, if, you're, if it's a new device, you have 365 days for initial reporting. There is absolutely no enforcement even if you don't report after 365 days. Uh, next two points deal with the centralized database. We have CSSM that acts as a centralized database. We get the benefits of smart licensing where we have end-to-end -end visibility of licensing across our network. But we also have a single source of truth, which is the CSSM is going to be the single source of truth because the end device has absolutely no view other on the licensing level. Next, we have security. Uh, we always, always initiate the conversation from the device. So the switches generate the RUM report. The switches decide to send the RUM report over to the CSSM. The CSSM simply receives the RUM report and sends the acknowledgement back. At no point in any communication will the CSSM ever initiate a conversation. All right, with that, let's take a look at a demo. Uh, in this demo, I'll be using the CSLU on a Windows laptop. Uh, I'll be collecting the report from a, a switch and I'll be uploading, using the CSLU, I'll be uploading the report to the CSSM. And once the CSSM generates an acknowledgement, I'll be pushing that acknowledgement, acknowledgement back towards the end device. So as part of this demo, we're looking at a 9300 box. Uh, I'm first going to be checking the version that I'm going to be running on this box. So I'll be doing the show version here. Uh, here you can see that I'm running 17.3.2. 
this is a version where we have smart licensing user policy enabled by looking at uh, through license all I see smart licensing is enabled and we have network advantage and DNA advantage licenses in use and if you see uh, I have not sent a report yet to the CSSM I'm now going to go into my CSLU tool I'm going to use this button here to log in to the CSSM which is Cisco.com I'll be using my smart account login details now uh, i need if you look go to the preferences tab you'll see that cisco is available cisco here indicating cssm the port we're using is 8182 and you'll be able to see the urls that we're using to reach software.cisco.com now i'll be adding my product instance uh, for me to add the product instance i need to know the ip address of the product in question so i'll be typing in the ip address of the switch that i was just on right now I'll be clicking the product instance logins to specify the username and password of the switch. Now the next step would be to collect the actual ROM file from the device. So I'll be go clicking the box and I'll be using collect usage report. As you can see, I have already collected the report from the file and I've uploaded it to the CSSM as well. That brings us to the end of our demo. Again, if you have any feedback, please let us know in the comment section down below. Uh, please also uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of new videos when we release them on this channel. Thank you for your time and have a good day.